Hey YouTube, welcome to Thinking of Pi. Today I'm going to be starting a video series on the Weather Balloon Project. One of the main objectives of the project is to collect data. I'd like to collect data both inside and outside of the payload package. Now to collect data on the inside, I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi Sense Hat. The Sense Hat is a collection of sensors that connects directly to the Raspberry Pi. The Sense Hat is capable of detecting temperature, humidity, air pressure, direction, orientation, and acceleration. Let's go take a look at the Sense Hat. I'll show you how to put it on, and then we'll take a look at some programs that I wrote to show you how it works and how I'll be using it in the balloon project. So here we have the Sense Hat. There's a lot of things going on on this board here. We have an eight by eight RGB LED matrix. We have the humidity sensor, the pressure sensor, and this chip right here has the accelerometer, magnometer, and a gyroscope. It's all built into that one package right there. The temperature sensor is built into either the humidity sensor or the pressure sensor. Can't remember which, but not a big deal. There's also a joystick right here that will move in three directions. You got your X, Y, and Z if you press it. There's also this slot right here, which allows for the camera cable to go directly through the sense hat. Now, to put it on the Pi, you just line up these holes right here with your GPIO pins, and it goes right on there like that. Pretty easy. Now, there are some holes here to mount it and secure it directly to the board. Here with these holes on the corners. Not using those today since I've been taking it on an awful lot lately. So that's, that's how you put the sense hat on the Pi. Now, when you go to plug it in, if you've done this right, it lights up like that. And that's it. So let's head over to the computer and I'll show you some programs that I wrote and I'll show you how to make this thing work. All right, so I've got a couple of different programs that I want to show you today. First one here, I've labeled it uh, just Sense, and then I've got Sense Hat here. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, it might look like there's a lot going on here. It's not too complicated, but I do want to take you through this line by line in the Python shell over here. Pretty much all we have to do is just type this in line for line. I'll pick and choose what I want to put in there, but it's basically the same thing. So I just want to walk you through this. All right, so we're importing our library here for the sense hat. And then I'm going to define the object sense to the library and the object sense hat. And then if we want to get the temperature, you just type sense.get underscore temperature. And it just immediately returns the value in Celsius, 33.74, etc. Um, now, it's definitely not that hot in here, but if you noticed how close the sense hat was to the Raspberry Pi, it's, take, it's uh, gathering heat from the processor. The processor does get pretty hot and you can't have heat sinks on there while the sense hat's on. Um, you could put some longer headers on there, but that's just the way it's set up and it is going to get a bit hotter than it is than it actually is in the room here. However, for the balloon project, that's going to be fine. That's actually exactly what I want is ambient temperature inside the payload package. Now we can do the same thing here with the other variables. We can do sense.get pressure. Oh, that's odd. Make sure we put our underscore in there. There we go. And that returns the value in millibars. Um, since I'm indoors, it's not the most reliable when it comes to air pressure. There's a lot of variables that affect air pressure, 
So right now it's about 964 millibars. And we can do it with humidity. There we go. Make sure you get this parentheses on the end. And we're at about 18% humidity in here. Now, I do want to show you with the uh, magnometer and the gyroscope, the data comes back a lot different. So the code here does have to be formatted a little bit differently than with the other ones. So if we just want to get the raw compass data, sense.get. Oops, there it goes. Compass raw. There we go. It actually returns an array. We've got the Y, Z, and X values there for the compass. And the gyroscope actually does the same thing. Sense dot get orientation. There. And it returns the pitch, the roll, and the yaw. So when we're dealing with it in the program over here, we have to define which item in the array we want to work with. So back to the program here. Um, we're importing the sense head object. We do need a new library here called date time, which just uses the built-in date and time in the Raspbian operating system. I've got a variable here for a delay. And it's going to be one second because we're going to be collecting data every second. So we have an array here labeled sense data. And we're going to go down this list here and collect data from all of our sensors, temperature, pressure, humidity, compass, and orientation. And it's all going to get appended to that array. And then we're going to put a timestamp at the end here with the date time function. And this whole object is going to return the sense data. The sense data um, array from the beginning of the section there. Then we've got our loop down here. Um, we're going to have data equal to the um, get sense data, which was the object that we created up here. And then we're going to have our counter dt, which is data minus one, so the item prior to collecting the data, minus the timestamp. That'll give us our counter. And then Right here, we're just going to be printing the data that comes out. So let's go ahead and run this, and you'll see the live data, or the raw data, there it is. And it's just going to loop through that every second. So it's not too complicated, but there's kind of a lot to it. Just wanted to walk you through that here with this simple program. Now, let's stop it here take a look at our data. I'm not really doing anything with it, so it's all going to be pretty much the same. Now, we need to actually be able to do something with this. So it would be nice if we could save it to our computer or save it to the Raspberry. So I've got another program over here where we're basically doing the same thing, but we're going to be logging the data to a CSV file, which will make it portable. We can save it. We can move it to another computer, upload it to the internet, do whatever we want with it. So we've got our sense hat, date time. We need another library here, CSV. There's an object in there called writer. And then we're importing the entire CSV library here. And again, this is all pretty much the same. We've got our sense data um, returning sense data. Now right here, we're going to create an object or create a file more or less um, with open data CSV and write mode. And we're going to create a new line, and this whole object is going to be defined as F. And we're going to start by opening data writer, and we're opening that object here. And then, first thing we need to do is write our header. So, along the top of the header, you're going to have all the variables that are being read above. You need to make sure that that's in the right order, otherwise you might not understand your data. And then we've got our loop here, same loop as before. 
but we do have right here data writer dot write row data and that's going to take the sense data and it's going to write it to a new line I'm also going to be printing the data so we can see that it's working but it is going to be saving it to that CSV file now just a note on this part right here data.csv currently exists if it does not exist it will create it and if it does exist it will overwrite whatever is there so keep that in mind as you're going about this let's go ahead and run it here and we see the same thing as before it's printing out the data just like it did before however it is actually saving it to a CSV file right now now one important thing I'd like to point out in regards to um, the Thonny Python editor, if you hit this red button right here, I'm going to go try to open my data file. It's empty. Don't know why it does that, but important thing to keep in mind, I spent about 12 hours messing around with that, trying to figure out why it wasn't saving my data. But if you're running it in the editor, let it run a couple times here. Don't want to hit the stop button. You're going to press Control C and interrupt it. You get some error messages here. But when you come over here to open your data file, the data is actually going to be there. And it's a CSV file. So it can be exported to Excel, um, numbers, whatever, um, whatever data editor uh, spreadsheet application you choose to use. Now here we see our header with all the variables in the right order and all of our values exactly where they're supposed to be. So not a lot to it. It's pretty easy to use. And this is going to be the main data logging application that I'll be using on the balloon. I'll have more variables than this. I'll be measuring altitude and GPS location and importing that into Python through the Adreno and the GPS tracker. Um, now there is one other program I want to show you. This program is actually on a different SD card. I was playing around with some stuff and really wanted to make this happen. So I've loaded up the other SD card. I'm just going to run this here. I'm not going to show you the code today. But this is something that I'll probably be using with the balloon project as well. It takes a minute to load up. It uses a lot of resources. But basically using the same program that I just showed you, I'm able to plug it all into a graph. It updates in real time. Right now I've just got it continuously plotting temperature and humidity. It doesn't use a whole lot of resources on the 3B+. Plus. Um, next week I will be showing you how to make this awesome application. You can find a lot of different uses for this. But I'm excited to use it with the Balloon Project, so make sure you subscribe. You're not going to want to miss next week and the rest of the Balloon Project. I'm really excited about all of this. So I'll talk to you guys all next week. Thanks.